I went walking down the tribunal highway, I saw above me that endless skyway, and I saw below me that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. The song that you heard truly captures what India is. But alas, in this beautiful land there still exist pockets of poverty, misery and deprivation. And if we do not address them proactively, it might threaten the soul of India. Murshidabad, a historical place. In 1757, the tragic beginning of the British takeover of India started here. Sadly, a large section of people living here have yet to get the fruits of freedom that we ushered in 1947. The beautiful Ganges flows through this area. A mute witness to this continuing tragedy. This film is about them. Let's visit Jangipur, the epicenter of this tragedy. About 500,000 people in this area have to earn their bare minimal livelihood from BD rolling. BDs are a slim, hand-rolled, unfiltered cigarettes, which is a popular form of smoking tobacco, particularly in rural India. There are a hundred million beady smokers in India, of whom 600,000 die every year due to beady smoking. The industry engages workers, majority of which are women and children. After rolling a thousand beadies, the people are paid a paltry sum of rupees 40. This forces the whole family of men, women, children and elderly to go on working the whole day for their bare survival. The lanes are full of laborers, children, old people, men and women. They are not gathered in one place to work, as in a factory, but work just about anywhere, outside their homes, in their courtyards, anywhere. Out in the open here, they do not even realize when and how their freedom has been snatched away from them. There are no regular hours of work, just continuous drudgery, only to survive. Sleeping, waking, eating, they must roll the beadies. When tired, they dream of something else to do, which might offer them a better life. But everyone doesn't dream, though everyone has a basket in which they have tendu leaves, tobacco, string. 
and an iron instrument to seal the mouth of the beady. At all times, from early morning to late night, they are rolling beadies. Why is it that the incidence of TB, asthma, anemia is high amongst them as compared to other groups? Evidently, it is because they are not in a formal working environment such as a factory or mill, nor are they united. They do not get fair wages, minimum social security, not even the regulatory masks or gloves to wear while working. Let's take a closer look at their pitiful existence. Anju Bibi, 85 years old, a widow from Bokshit Para village, is a living example of a woman in the beady rolling industry. At 10, she was married into a family that rolled beadies. In this area, the only qualification needed to be a bride is whether she can roll beadies. She doesn't need looks, intelligence or capability. For the last 75 years, Anju Bibi has been rolling beadies. The mother of 11 children, grandmother of 40 grandchildren, is today, at the age of 85, completely alone. She's weak and ill, yet to survive, she's still rolling beadies on her broken terrace. She can roll about 200 per day, earning a meager 8 rupees. What has the industry given this lady for the 75 years she has spent in it? Anju Bibi can only say, Allah, call me to you and end my problems. Mili Bibi, age 24 years, village, Bokshir Para, a mother of three children, Ever since she can remember, she has been rolling beadies. She is the only earning member in the family. A year ago, her husband ran away, afraid of unpaid debts. Now she has to bring up her children alone. When he was there, they rolled a thousand beadies a day. But now she can roll only 400, which earns her 17 to 18 rupees a day. And from which she can feed herself and her children only once a day on rice and potatoes. The children fall ill often due to inadequate nutrition. But Mili Bibi has no money for medicines. Mili Bibi can see no way ahead for herself and her children. Could there be a way? Rojina Bibi Oblivious to the harmful effects of rolling beadies, Rojina Bibi continues working all day even though she is full-term pregnant. <laughs> During her last two pregnancies too, Rojina Bibi had continued rolling beadies up to the last moment before her delivery and resumed within two to three days of giving birth. It is no wonder that both her children suffer from malnutrition. What will be the future of this unborn child? Because apart from rolling beadies, they have no alternative means of sustenance. Madhubi Khatun, seven years old, Umrapur village. She has been assisting her mother to roll beadies since she was five years old. Madhubi's little soft childish hands can roll 400 beadies a day. For this, she has had to forgo education as well as play. Her mother Khatima says that education is important but how can it be more important than earning to run the home? If she is good at rolling beadies, getting her married will not be a problem. 
Gul Pasha, 11 years old, studying in the 5th standard. Same story. She lives with her maternal grandmother and her uncle. She goes to private tuition classes and as soon as she returns, she joins her aunt and her grandmother in rolling beadies. Her household is so poor that she has to roll beadies night and day. Her eyes water with the strain of working in the semi-dark. Is it water or tears? Gul Pasha is not permitted to use even one paisa of the money she earns with this eye-damaging labor. She wants to study, to play with her friends, things she hasn't been able to do for years. This painful story goes on and on. From this lane to that, from this house to that, from 1847 to 2008, like the continuous flow of the Ganges, the stories of these women and children who roll beadies don't ever stop. Here the children are taught that if they don't roll beadies, they will not be able to go to school nor eat twice a day. The girls are twice burdened or thrice. They have to go to school, do the housework, mind the infants and roll beadies too to keep the house going. On school days, the children roll beadies for six hours and on holidays, ten hours. This must be the only district in all of India, or really the world, where children are not happy that it's a holiday. There are exceptions too. Kakuli Sarkar, an unmarried girl from Bakshirpara. Dreams in her eyes, self-confidence in her voice, she has passed her higher secondary school examinations this year. She has been rolling beadies since she was 10 years of age. Her father works in a beady factory. She knows the dangers to her health from this occupation. But she continues to roll beadies. She has no alternative. She wants to study. Thanks to a letter from her school, she gets some aid. But she fears she might not be able to continue to do so. Her back hurts. She has headaches. She has persistent cough. But she continues to roll BDs. She hopes one day some help group might come. Some assistance will arrive from somewhere so she has a better life. Maybe someday her village might just change. These are her dreams. Dreams of the exception. Kakuli. Munshi, representative of the owners. These men are associated with the factories and are controlling the lives of beady workers. Every morning they supply them with raw materials, tendu leaves, tobacco and strings. The following day they collect the rolled beadies. The beadies that pass inspection are paid for at the rate of 40 rupees per thousand. Workers say that the munshis give them substandard leaves and then reject the beadies. It is another matter that even the rejected beadies do get sold. Munshis also benevolently lend money to these hapless families in their hour of need and in the process keep them in perpetual bondage. The owners live in palatial homes far away from this miserable setting. There are altogether 300 owners making major beady brands, besides thousands of small manufacturers. They make vast amounts of profit. Earlier, beadies were made primarily in factories by employed males. But when the workers started asking the owners for their identity cards and other statutory benefits, the owners decided to dismantle the whole system. 
thus ensuring that they can work with impunity without following the child labor law, which clearly says that no child under 14 years of age can be employed. They also escape from BD and Cigar Mazdoor Act, which lays down the working conditions and statutory welfare measures. There is a hospital for BD workers in Dhulia, funded by the Government of India. But you have to search in vain for doctors there. Gradually, the BD workers have stopped coming to the hospital, leaving them without any health protection. Although they suffer from numerous health problems, particularly associated with hazards of their vocation. we have before us an industry that in making its final product spreads illness and death. Yet, the moment voices are raised against it, people justify it as being the livelihood of its workers. But more than 60 years after independence, do we want to encourage an industry which endangers lives of its workers? Which snatches away childhood and its product causes painful death to about